All right, let's have, uh, let's kind of put some of these thoughts together. It's always fun to think back and look at mistakes other people have made, right? And we'll never make these mistakes. There's an election in 1936, Landon versus Roosevelt. I'm sure you've heard of Roosevelt. You may or may not have heard of Landon. And no, I didn't vote in this election. But they sent out 10 million ballots or surveys. They surveyed 10 million people for this election. Now, to give you an idea, in the recent election last year, the typical survey, nationwide survey, had 1,000 people. And you'll see in 106, 1,000 people is actually a good size for a survey, and that gets you about a 3% margin of error. Just 1,000 people out of 300 million. They sent out 10 million surveys. They got back 2.3. They should have been spot on, right? I mean, we're within 3% margin of error with 1,000 people. What happened? Well, the poll predicted Landon over Roosevelt, and Roosevelt won by the largest margin of victory in history. <coughs> this is how they conducted their survey. <coughs> what do you think? Any ideas there? Uh, Class. Yes? Uh, just kind of like see so magazine subscribers, registered car owners, residential telephones. It's kind of like upper end families, upper end residents of the U.S. That really doesn't take into account like the common man or somebody that's like lower income. So just kind of. What's going on at this point in time in American history? 1926, 36, 36, that's a great depression. It's a great depression. Now ask your grandparents about it sometime, all right? 30% unemployment. Now today it would be unusual to find someone that didn't have a phone with them, right? I mean, this is incredibly different in two generations. Even I can remember party lines pick up a phone and there might be someone else talking because three or four families would share one telephone line. Right. In this time period, people were unemployed. Forget about a car. Yeah, I'm trying to, in the CCC programs, you're in the bucket day. Right. I'm trying to get a meal. You think I'm going to buy a car, a magazine, or maybe have a telephone? No. It was a convenient survey, wasn't it? These people are easy to communicate with. I can look them up in telephone books and registration of automobiles and magazine subscription lists. I can find them. But I was talking to the wrong people. Historically, those that socioeconomic group there tends to vote Republican. And guess what? Landon was a Republican. And guess what? They said Landon's going to win. It didn't happen. Another statistical blunder. This is another election, and no, I didn't vote in this one either. But getting closer to my time. Dewey versus Truman. Uh, the polls, they were so confident, they actually printed out the newspaper on election eve, before the deadlines, Dewey defeats Truman. <coughs> So they probably did that at 6 or 7 o'clock at night and they were still voting. What did they do wrong? Well, they, they proved over the 1930, they did polls, more scientific polls, but the mistake they made this time is they stopped polling around Labor Day, the middle of September. The feeling was, all right, people have made up their mind, now we know. Well, one thing's certain about Americans, we don't make up our mind, not all of us. We can be persuaded by debates or events, unfortunately, negative advertising, whatever. It has improved, this kind of statistics, the statistics of predicting elections has improved incredibly. And I don't know if following elections is fun if you're a statistician just for that reason. There's a statistical walk in New York that did an incredible job. I don't know if you've read about it. He nailed it. Every one of the states in the presidential election, 
most of the Senate races, even a lot of the congressional races. So the, the techniques have gotten a lot, lot better now. Another pitfall. So these are you know, a big laundry list of things to look out for, things to make sure you don't do, and things to look for being that informed skeptic that I want you to become. Misleading statistics or statistics that really don't make a lot of sense. Percentages are abused a lot. And most frequently, you can't watch a uh, sports broadcast without someone saying, I like this guy, he has 120%. All right, fine. I suppose if he gave 140%, he'd be better. I don't know. 200%? But this is an example of a, a real ad claiming Connell Airlines. Uh, they had a bad rep, I guess, for a while for losing baggage. And they stated, we've already improved 100% in the last six months. But what does that mean? They've improved their lost baggage by 100%. Now, what's it normally mean when you say something's improved 100%? It's a guarantee. Well, if, if your grade was a 50 and you called your parents a month later, I'd be proved it 100%. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, what would it mean in this case if we're talking about lost baggage? Lost more. Did they lose more? Well, they would be bragging about that. <coughs> so, do they not lose any now? Is that what they're saying? Do you believe that? No. Did they lose half as many as they did before? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, saying we've already improved 100% in the last six months would be saying that we've made no mistakes. Yeah, I think literally, it, from the common interpretation of 100% improvement, that's how you might interpret it. But I don't think that's the truth, and I don't know if that's really what they're trying to tell us. The bottom line is, is confusing use of statistics percentages. And I've got some other great examples for you later on. All right. Right. Clearly, you don't know what you're talking about. Right? I mean, this is obvious. Right? 
is there anything mathematically, statistically wrong with my operation? Did I do anything wrong? No, I just added up a bunch of numbers, took the average. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the interpretation, it's the context. I was using the wrong kind of data to get the kind of answer that we were looking for. And the answer we're looking for is what might predict the winner of the game. I don't think anyone seriously believes that the uniform numbers are going to be a predictor for the game. All right. So let's talk about data, those X's, sub I's that go into all those formulas. One way to, sh to characterize it is quantitative versus uh, qualitative. Quantitative data is <coughs> it suggests it's numbers. It's a measure, result of measurement or accounting. So a weight, an IQ score, a height, a time, all of those are qualitative. It's always a number. Well, I use qualitative numbers here, right? I use numbers off the jerseys, so those are qualitative. Or they're quantitative, excuse me. They're numbers, aren't they? Yes. Well, qualitative is something that is just a label or a description. If I ask you, what's your favorite color? Who's your favorite football team? Yeah. Which political party? Are you left or right handed? All of those, in those examples, aren't numeric. And they're obviously just descriptors. And I can't take an average or a standard deviation or I can't do any of those kind of statistics with it. I can use those, but I have to use them differently. So the point I want to make in this example, numbers can be qualitative data. If I'm looking at the number in the football jersey, that's that's not quantitative, it's qualitative. It's a description. It's like having your <coughs> last name or your social security number. It's just identifying you. Right. So just being a number by itself doesn't guarantee it's quantitative in nature. That number can just be a descriptor. For example, it wouldn't make much sense to take everybody's social security number and find the average social security number in this class. What would we have? Nothing. Right? Because those are <coughs> qualitative pieces of information. Mostly, we will be working with quantitative. So now let's kind of get out the uh, microscope a little bit closer at quantitative. And we're going to make two distinctions, uh, discrete and continuous. Okay, what do I mean by discrete? Well, I have discrete data when I have either a finite number of values or I have a countable number of values. Now, what's the countable number of values? Well, an example of a countable number would be all the integers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. That's a countable number. For example, <clears throat> The author likes this example in the last edition of the books also. If I wanted to study the number of eggs laid per day per hen, so my population are all chickens, my parameters eggs laid per day, that's what I'm studying. Is that quantitative? Sure. Is it discrete? Yes. It's discrete because it's either a finite number or Another way of looking at it is there are gaps between the values. A chicken can lay one egg or two eggs. She can't lay 1.5 eggs. How about continuous? Well, continuous data, again, remember, we're on quantitative values, numbers. They're an infinite number. There's no gaps, there's no jumps, there's no holes. Now, you have to make uh, one little uh, kind of leap of faith with me here. <laughs> Quantitative data is often measurements, heights, weights, distances. We have to just pretend a little bit here and assume we have infinite precision in our ability to measure. In reality, we don't, but we're going to assume that for statistics. So that means I could have measured the amount of milk produced by a cow today and get this number of gallons. 
right? That means if I was to measure two of you and I get a height of 70.112 inches and another one of you was 70.113 inches, is it possible to find a human being that's in between you two in height? Yes. Yeah. Pick any two numbers, and I can find another one in the middle. But it's this continuous quantitative thing. And again, you have to give me the assumption of infinite precision, right? So that's what continuous means. And an awful lot of the data we work with would be continuous and quantitative. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a lot. Discreet in chapter five. All right, that's a good way to break for the weekend. Have a great time. Happy marching. I'll see you Monday.